Good evening, Good evening and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to worship on this Christmas Eve. I'm Pastor Erica Cunningham. I've been here several times on Sunday mornings um, helping out. And I'm glad to be here with you uh, this evening for our Christmas Eve service. You'll find everything you need included in the bulletin. Um, you should have picked up a candle on your way in, either um, one with real fire or one with fake fire, depending on your comfort level. Um, we will light those at the end of the service. Um, I don't have any other announcements at this time, so I invite you to please rise as you are able. Gracious God, your angels broke into the midnight of a sleeping world to sing the news that Christ was born in Bethlehem. Break into the midnight of our dark world and stir hearts to hear again the message of your love. O oh God, on this night of joyful expectation, we look forward to the coming of the child whose birth was foretold by prophets proclaimed by angels, and greeted by shepherds. Open our eyes to see in Jesus your loving purpose. Loving God, in the stillness of this dark night, touch our understanding with your Holy Spirit, that we may know again the wonder of your love in Jesus Christ. And though there was no room for them at Bethlehem's inn, Help us to make more room for Jesus in our lives, responding to his love and receiving his peace. Come, Lord Jesus. Where there is hatred, give love. Where there is sadness, give joy. Come, Lord Jesus. Be light for our darkness. Be born in our hearts. Amen.
the grace of the child born for us, and the joy of the Son given to us be with you all, and also with you. You may be seated. <clears throat> The first reading this evening comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the prophecy written in chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of the Midian defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. We will now have the singing of O Holy Night by John Grunewald and accompanied by Jean Carlson. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of my dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh he Proclaim. Hey. 
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Our next reading is from Luke, the second chapter, verses 8 through 15. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, watching over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel. <coughs> praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about.
reading from Luke. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. This time I invite all of our uh, children and youngsters to come forward. Um, you can sit on the steps here. Don't knock over the Advent wreath. a spot wherever you're actually going to probably want to turn a little bit to me because we're going to read both to you and to the congregation how many of you like candy canes well we're going to read a story about candy canes this is called the legend of the candy cane One dreary evening in the depths of November, a stranger rode into town. He stopped his horse in front of a lonely storefront. The windows were boarded shut, and the door was locked fast. But the man looked at it, smiled, and said, It will do. All through the gray short days and the long dark nights of November, the man worked. The townspeople could hear the faint pam, pam, pam of his hammer and the swish, swish, swish of his saw. They could smell the sweet, clean scent of new lumber and the deep, oily smell of new paint. But no one knew who the man was or what he was doing. He's building something. The mayor hoped he was a doctor to heal his illness. The young wives hoped he was a tailor to, to trade, to make beautiful dresses. The farmers hoped he was a trader to exchange their grain for good. But the children had the strongest 
deepest wish of all, a wish they did not tell their parents, a deep, quiet, secret wish that none of them said out loud. No one spoke to the man. No one asked if he needed help. They just waited and watched and wondered and wished. But one small girl watched and wondered, waited and wished longer than she could stand. And one snowy day, she knocked at the stranger's door. Hello, she said. My name is Lucy. Do you need some help? The man waved warmly and smiled. Then he opened the door and Lucy stepped inside. A long counter ran down the side of the room. Bare shelves filled the opposite walls. In the back, there were dozens and dozens of barrels and crates. Could you help me unpack, the man asked. Lucy's heart sank at the sight of all the boxes. What if there were only barrels of nails and bags of flour? But she removed her dripping boot and hung her coat on a peg. The stocking feet, on stocking feet, she crossed the rough wooden floor and knelt beside a crate. You can sit here. You can sit right here. Okay. I'll make sure you can see. Oops, as I drop things. Please open it, the man urged. Slowly, Lucy put her hand into the box and pulled out an object wrapped in tissue. Round and heavy, it almost slipped through her fingers. Lucy trembled a little, a little as she unwrapped it. It was a glass jar. Lucy gave the man a puzzled look. Go on, his nod said. So she unpacked another glass jar and another and another until she was completely surrounded by jars of all shapes and sizes, tall and thin, round and squat. Jars with lids and jars without. Now, the man said, for something to put inside. And he pulled over a huge crate stamped with a strange word. As Lucy unpacked, her eyes lit up. It was candy, her favorite candy, gumdrops. Try some, the man said. She popped one in her mouth. Now she could hardly unwrap fast enough. Peppermint sticks, taffy, lollipops, chewing gum. Wide-eyed, she looked at the man. We wished, Lucy said. Yes, I know, said the man, and here it is. Welcome to Sonneman's Candy Store. I am John Sonneman. Soon the small store was filled with candies, gleaming in their glass jars, raspberry suckers and tiny lemon drops, brightly colored jawbreakers and long tangles of licorice, pink and white peppermints for church and butterscotch balls for company. Then, in the very last package, in the very last crate, was a candy Lucy had never seen before. A red and white striped candy stick with a crook on the end. What is this? Lucy asked. This, Mr. Sonneman explained, is a candy cane. It is a very special Christmas candy. Why? Lucy asked. Tell me, Mr. Sonneman said. What letter does it look like? Late, Lucy took the candy and turned it in her hand. J, she said. Yes, Mr. Sonneman smiled. J is for Jesus, who was born on Christmas Day. Now, turn it over. What does it remind you of? Lucy turned the candy in her head. She peered down intently. I know, she said finally. 
It's like a shepherd's staff. Who were the first to find out about Jesus' birth, Mr. Sonneman asked. Shepherds in the field, Lucy answered, watching over their flocks by night. But Mr. Sonneman, what are the stripes for, Lucy asked. The man's eyes grew sad. The prophet Isaiah said, by his stripes we are healed. Before he died on the cross, Jesus was, bit, was, was whipped. He bled terribly. The red reminds us of his suffering and his blood. But then, Mr. Sonneman continued, the candy is white as well. When we give our lives to Jesus, his blood washes away our sins, making us white and pure as snow. That, he said, is the story of the candy cane. Is it a secret, Lucy asked. Mr. Sonneman looked at her for a long moment. It's a story that needs to be told, he said. Will you help me share it? It was now the depths of December. The town was whipped around by blizzard winds. For days, the sun hid itself. But every morning, Mr. Sonneman and Lucy ventured out. They wore heavy wooden co woolen coats and bright hand-knit scarves. And in their stiff, mittened fingers, they each held a bag. They went to every house in town. They traveled to every farm in the country. They knocked on every door. In every home, they told the story. They left a small gift and they gave an invitation. On the afternoon of Christmas Eve, the sun, was fi the sun finally broke through the clouds and Sonneman's candy store officially opened. The mayor came, feeling better than he'd felt in days. The young wives came, dressed in beautiful smiles. The farmers came, eager to trade grain for Christmas gifts. The children ran in dizzy circles. Yes, their wish had come true. Yes, they had come to share in the opening of the candy store, but they shared something more, something bigger, something better. On that Christmas Eve, they shared the story of the candy cane. They told of the miracle of Christ's birth. They told of his death, and they told of his love. So I have some candy canes here for you. Now I do have the red and white. Yeah, I'm going to give you one. Don't worry. I know everybody's eager. So here, you can each have two. You get a red and white one and a one that's not red and white. Here, can you take these? Thank you. There you go. Here you go. Okay, here you go. I'm gonna take one of those. You get, you get two, there you go. Once you have your candy canes, you can go back to your mom and dad. Yes, you can, there you go. Okay, you can have that one and this one. You get a big one and a little one. That's your option, there you go. Good job. Got candy canes? There you go. You can go back once you get them. There you go. Good job. Perfect. Good job. And thank you all for coming up. You waited so patiently. There you go. Oops, got it? Uh oh, got it? All right. You're welcome. I have plenty of candy. Oops, thank you. There you go, thank you.
So do not be afraid. These are the first words spoken to the, by, to the shepherds in the fields by the angels that Christmas night. And every time I read or hear this text, these words jump out at me. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. That's so much easier to say than to do. How can we not be afraid? We live in a war-torn world filled with violence and death. And for so many of us, our own lives are filled with fear. A terminal illness, family conflict, the death of a loved one. These can all cause fear and doubt. And each one of us has our own things of which we are afraid. Some of my greatest fears include someone breaking into my home, especially while I'm sleeping, my house catching on fire, and bats. I'm terrified of bats. If I ever get a bat in my house, I will be outside calling for everyone I know to come and help until the bat gets out. So when I read that the shepherds were terrified when they saw the first angel in the sky, I think of how I would react if a bat came flying in here tonight. I picture the shepherds ducking and running for cover, maybe even screaming and curling into a small ball on the ground. It's not really the picture you want on the front of a Christmas card. And I'm pretty sure that Mary and Joseph were filled with their own fears. Mary. A young, unwed, teenaged mother is carrying the Messiah. She and Joseph are far from home. There is no place for them to sleep. To not be afraid seems strange to us. And some fear is certainly good. If you weren't afraid of getting run over, You'd never look both ways before crossing the street. If you weren't afraid of your house catching on fire, you'd leave candles burning all night. So some fear does make us safer. Yet over and over again, God tells us, do not be afraid. Someone has said that the Bible contains this phrase 365 times. Now, I haven't counted for myself, and of course, it all depends on how you translate the Greek and Hebrew. But assuming this is true, or even close to true, that's God telling you every single day of the year, do not be afraid. It can be so easy for us to cling to our fears, to hold on to them, to not be able to let them go. You've probably seen and heard the story that surrounds the Charlie Brown Christmas story and Linus. It became popular several years ago, but I still reference it because it is so powerful. Now, if you remember Linus, he is very attached to his blue blanket. He carries it with him everywhere. But at the end of the movie, as Linus is reciting the same passage from Luke that we heard tonight, when he gets to the line, do not be afraid, he drops his blanket on the ground. 
When Linus drops his blanket, he is reminding you that the birth of Jesus is not a message of fear, but one of love. God loves the world so much that God takes on human flesh and bone to free you from all your fears. Do not be afraid. To you is born this day a Savior. To you is born a Savior. To you, not just to those shepherds so long ago, not just to the people living in Bethlehem, but to you, to you who are sitting here this night at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, to you is born a Savior. Do not be afraid. This message extends beyond the shepherds and comes to you, bringing a promise of peace. The shepherds were terrified and afraid. Mary is young and scared. And many of us fear the uncertainties of what lies ahead. But God says to you this night and every day, do not be afraid, for to you is born a Savior. This indeed is the good news for you and for all people. For on this day, a Savior is born. A Savior who drives away your fears. A Savior who continually comes to you, pouring out love and grace. You do not need to be afraid, for Christ is always with you. Christ is with you in your joy and in your sorrow in your good times and in your worst times. Christ comes to you in your fear, but Christ does not leave you to live in that fear. Christ comes to you in the darkest times and brings you into the light. And Christ says to you, over and over and over again. To, to not be afraid. To you is born a Savior. Amen. Please stand.
You may be seated and we will now collect our offering. And now we'll have the prayers of the church. Heavenly Father, as we gather on this Christmas day, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus. Thank you for the love that brought him to us and for the hope and salvation he brings. May our hearts overflow with gratitude. Prince of Peace, in a world filled with turmoil and strife, we seek your divine peace this Christmas. May your tranquility reign in our hearts, homes, and the entire world. Merciful God, as we celebrate the birth of your Son, we acknowledge our imperfections and sins. Grant us the grace to repent and turn toward your forgiving arms. Lord Jesus, as we gather as one church family, may the spirit of unity and love be among us. Help us to set aside our differences and come together in your name. Eternal God, in a world often filled with despair, we cling to the hope that your son's birth brings. May his light dispel the darkness in our lives. Gracious Father, Bless our families this Christmas. May our homes be filled with your love and joy. Strengthen the bonds of kinship and faith among us. Compassionate God, we remember those who are less fortunate this Christmas. May your grace shine upon them, and may we be your hands and feet in bringing comfort and relief. Heavenly Father, as the angels proclaimed 
good tidings of great joy, we too rejoice in the birth of your Son. Fill our hearts with unending joy this Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to please rise as you are able. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The ushers will direct you forward for communion. All are welcome at the table, for it is not our invitation, but Christ's. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. body of Christ given for you the body of Christ given for you the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you the blood of Christ shed for you and the blood of Christ shed for you <coughs> body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. I may Jesus bless you. 
bless you now and always. The body of Christ given for you. 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 May Jesus bless you now and always. The body of Christ given for you. 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 May Jesus bless you now and always. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Bless you now and always. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. May Jesus bless you now and always. May Jesus bless you now and always. May Jesus bless you now and always. Hi. I think you're supposed to go that way. I mean, you can join this family, you know. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Hi. May Jesus bless you now and always. The body of Christ given for you. 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 <laughs> the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. May Jesus bless you now and always. The body of Christ given for you. May Jesus bless you now and always. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. May Jesus bless you now and always. May Jesus bless you now and always. May Jesus bless you now and always. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ given for you.
I invite you to please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We will now have the lighting of the candles. And we ask you to remember that the unlit candle is the one that you tip to light. The ushers are coming forward to start the candle lighting, going back. We will be singing Silent Night once all the candles are lit through the congregation.
May you be filled with the wonder of the shepherds, the joy of the angels, and the peace of the Christ child, the ni this night and always. May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born.